Well, welcome aboard, folks. This is number seven of seven in our whole series on the drops in the afternoon. This is the combo drop. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way in the Dickens I'm going to be able to pull it all together in all the nuances. I know there are a number of you now that have your curiosity up and would like some really good, solid, what do I do at home out in Arkansas, and I can't tell you what to do specifically because of the complexity of every unique individual out there. What you really do need to do is get the data right in the first place. If there's a theme here, it's get the data right. So first of all, if you're new to this video, if you've just come on board, and this is your first time talking to me, the very first thing I want you to do is take a look at the entire playlist so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. The combo drop is very complex. And you really have to understand the, the several other, the six other videos that came before. The theme is really simple. I'll summarize it very briefly. One is we have to think about the thinking process in the afternoon that it can be instructive. The important first thing is that most of the drops in the afternoon that are not taken care of properly are simple cognitive drops. They need a little more medication. Let's assess them, see them, treat them. Three that are more complex with increasing levels of complexity, sad, mad, whatever. We talked about those in great detail. The last one we just did was the energy drop. It's even more subtle, more difficult, and not on the radar. Why? Because people have not agreed on the testing. People don't think of the testing. And really, salivary testing for cortisol is so easy and so uh, able to be replicated on a regular basis. I mean, we see, I can see a, a person's cortisol level and I can tell them how they are through the day 90% of the time. I mean, and I get it right just by looking at the doggone lab results. So cortisol is useful. We have to treat it. Yes, we treat it with supplements. Now we're down to the thrust of this particular presentation right here, this seven. And as I said, there are no cookie cutter solutions, but the issue is how do you weave some of this material together in terms of an actual treatment protocol? That's what you're here for on number seven. The very first thing I want to raise is we should do the easiest thing first. That's why it's in that order. Let's get the dosage right in the first place. I've got numerous videos on that. The dosage right means an afternoon dose if the child needs an afternoon dose. We don't forget the afternoon and kind of hope that the family's taken care of, but we're really going to take care of school. I mean, there's more to life than school. School's important, but family is too. All right, so we'll do that. Then the next thing is those three levels of serotonin. Immediately, as soon as you get into serotonin, then the question is, what do you do with serotonin? How do you actually move those together? We have numerous videos. The biggest video on this one is right here, making sure you don't mix these doggone Prozac and Paxil together with amphetamines. It's a pervasively denied problem. I've got plenty of references in the description when you get there to see what's going on. If you happen to go over and look at that, that particular video I just showed you. So, well, what's the priority? If a person's suicidal, my friends, we don't recommend starting with a stimulant medication. Take the clinical priority, the biggest problem, and treat it first. How long should you treat that condition before you start with another one? A sufficient time to make sure that the medication is working properly without side effects. Now you could come back very quickly and say, well, Parker, hey, a person can have side effects three months down the road. Yeah, that's true, but when you have a situation, as we all do, where our lives are moving forward and reality is changing, how do we more aggressively, without doing harm, move forward and get these medications mixed? My feeling is a, a change on an acute situation, even every other week, every, every week is fine, then it goes to every other week and then once a month until you reach some level of stabilization but we start with the worst condition first. If a person is mildly depressed, they have whatever, they've got a little bit of an attitude problem, but they're just all over the place in school, well, start with the stimulant. Now, the issue when I say start doesn't mean they have to come back for another med check in two weeks to get the next medication. We frequently, if there are two kind of mild, subtle conditions of depression and ADD, we'll start the ADD medication first, and say, watch for the drop in the afternoon. Look at these videos so you know what that drop means. If they have a serotonin drop, which I predict they will based on my brief biologic review that I've just done, 
I would then start this medication that I'm giving you now, and I'll see you in two weeks since there's no acuity. If there's any acuity, give me a call. So those, are, those go that way. Then when we get over to the energy drop and IgG, we're in a whole different world, my friends. It's much more complicated. And there's no way I can cover this in a four or five minutes. There is, very simply, that once you get over into the biomedical complexity of immune system dysregulation, it involves nutrition. It involves trace elements. It involves things like probiotics, bowel health. It involves uh, a variety of different things. Supplements that we have, to, it's much more complicated, bottom line. But we do that one last. Just as we did in this series, if the energy is a problem and it becomes more and more evident that that's the underlying serious problem, we don't start there because we're trying to form a therapeutic alliance with the person in the first place. If I say, <laughs> You have an adrenal problem, forget ADD. What are they going to say? I mean, the issue is if they've got ADD, we treat it. If they've got depression, we treat it. And then if these other issues supervene and are present and are deteriorating our entire treatment situation and we're shooting blanks, as I like to say, chasing our tail in the woods, that's from hunting rabbits out in Missouri when I was a kid. I mean, the issue is if that's the problem, we don't want the true definition of insanity repeating the same thing, expecting different results. Yeah, you've heard that before. And I do everything I can to keep from being insane in this situation. So thank you very much for your attention. That's a brief breakdown. Please stay tuned. Look at the core psych. We have over 400 articles on all these. Just go in there and type in to the search engine at core psych uh, a question and, and uh, a topic. It'll come up. Uh, most of the stuff we've covered, if you need more information, let us know. Please do the following. Come over here if I can get the pointer. Like this so that it'll get passed around to your friends. Please do join us and subscribe. And, you know, if you want to share it through other means, to some of your other social networks, we'd appreciate that because we're looking to spread the word on using science effectively to really measure and see what's going on with a human being. If we measure things like thyroid, if we look at sputum to see cortisol, if we measure neurotransmitters described in another uh, over on the blog on, on, at Core Psych. If we measure these things, we're much more likely to help the human being out than just throwing medication and kind of hoping we're chasing labels kind of thing. So thank you much. Subscribe. Talk to you later. Have a great day, folks. Thank you.